welcome you here to Leatherwood Church this morning. We just have a few announce meeting, uh, announcements uh, today. The youth are meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. They are practicing uh, their Christmas drama, so uh, uh, please have them here at 6 o'clock for that. Also, we are looking for people who are willing to teach Sunday school. We have three openings. We have first through fourth grade, or first through third, a fourth through sixth, and a youth position available. So if you are interested in that, please see me. We're trying to fill those before the first of the year. Uh, so if you're interested in those positions, please talk to me. Uh, also, uh, Food Bank is this Tuesday from 1 to 4 in New Bethlehem. They always need volunteers for that. Uh, Christmas Eve service is coming up. It's not this week, but the following week. Uh, at, uh, the service will begin at 7 p.m. Also, we're having a New Year's Eve party at the Red Bank Valley Community Center again this year uh, from 8 o'clock on, so uh, everyone's to bring a snack to share. Uh, also, bring your favorite board game or favorite video game, and there'll be stuff to do. They've got a pool table and some other things in there as well, so uh, that'll be for uh, New Year's <coughs> Eve. Also, Leroy is having a surgery tomorrow. Uh, Ember, is there, the sign-up sheet is on the back table. Uh, to help uh, him and Nancy out with some meals for over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so if you can make, a, make a, a meal for them and take it over, please sign up on the list. Uh, also, if you would like to be added or removed from the prayer wheel, uh, that's the prayer chain here at the church, uh, please see my wife. Uh, also, I believe that poinsettias are in today if you ordered one off of Elizabeth. Where's Elizabeth? Right here. Um, they're in my office now, so please see her about your poinsettia, and they can be placed up here, or you can take them with you. Uh, and if the names uh, that those are dedicated to, um, could go to my wife as well. And today at 2 o'clock, uh, the community choir will be doing their Love Came Down at Christmas program. Uh, it's a 60-member choir from all the churches in the area, uh, so if you haven't been out to see that, uh, Jim highly recommends it. So uh, today, 2 o'clock at the First Church of God. Does anyone else have any other announcements? For the scripture reading, I'm going to be reading out of Hebrews chapter 3, starting in verse 1. It says, Therefore, holy brothers, who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and the high priest whom we confess. He was, a fa he was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was a faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future, but Christ is faithful as a son over God's house. And we are his house, if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. I know that outside it doesn't look too bright, but inside we have your light to shine. Father, I pray that we would uh, draw close to you. We put aside all of the the troubles of the week and the stress of the week to come and Lord, we would just focus our thoughts on you. We thank you that you preside over this house. And we ask that you do that, move in mightily in your spirit today. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand and sing to you.
who made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Some did not recognize him. Though he came to his own, they turned him away. How tragic, how heartbreaking, how intense the pain must have been for God when those who should have known who Jesus was just walked by. This is a tale of great tragedy. Yet even in this great tragedy, there is great hope. Even in this tragedy, there is great joy. For those who do not receive him, or for those who do receive him, for those who do believe in his name, they are given a significant right. They are given the right to become children of God. This right is not biological. This right is not of genetic code. This right is purely of God. They are by right made spiritual children of God. They are, as Jesus said, born again when they believe. While many tragically walk on by, there are those who stop and take a second look. They don't walk on by. Each of us is given this opportunity to stop and take a second look. This morning, we light the first, second, and third candles to show that for those who believe in the light, for those who believe in Jesus Christ, they become children of God. Lord Jesus, how painful it must have been for you when we do not recognize for who you are. We will not walk on by and ignore you. We will take a second look and believe in your name. Empower us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time, we'd like the ushers to come forward for the morning tithes and offerings.
God is good, amen.
got the call out on the, on the Facebook page to pray, and we did, and he's home. So uh, praise the Lord for that. <coughs> Anyone else have a praise that they'd like to share? Yes, Janine. Okay. What, one year down, 18 to go? <laughs> Anybody else want to pray? Yes, me. Uh, mom made it back to Hawaii. Okay. <coughs> Ember. Just like to thank the whole church for, uh, for their support over the past week. Uh, you guys have really just uh, showed a lot of love to Ember's family. And, uh, you know, just from bringing food to kind words to memories to just standing with us. And uh, this is Em's first Sunday back with kind of an empty spot in the pew where her grandpa had sat. And it's, it's a rough one for her. And we just uh, really appreciate you guys as our church family. And uh, just say thank you. Anybody else with a praise? Yes, Ed. Our dad's home. He had a successful semester at school. Okay. Yes, Jen. I have a little Samaritan's uh, first walk story. Uh, Jeff and Juan and Laura went to Baltimore. They're a medical couple to help process the boxes. And on their shift, they processed 41,000 boxes. Um, on and a five-hour shift. On a five-hour shift. And their job was to open up the boxes and make sure everything was okay inside. And uh, when they opened up one of the boxes, it happened to be Larry's in my box. And so they came home and called us, and they were so excited. And um, Jeff said, your box is on the way to Panama. And he was... We were just both all about that. Okay. And also, they packed a little fishing kit in their box. And, you know, some of the places these boxes go, maybe fishing kit wouldn't work, but in Panama, a fishing kit would work very well. So, what are the chances of that happening? I wonder. In God's kingdom, they're, they're pretty good. Anybody else with a praise? Yes, Samara. My cousin Callie had a baby yesterday. His name's Liam James. Okay, Callie, have a baby. And what was the name? Liam James. Liam James. Okay, go on. I guess it's both of the praise and prayer requests. We're supposed to tell them also. Okay. <laughs> I'm guessing the one in Maryland? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Jim. Okay. Any prayer requests this morning? Yes, Tracy. Um, Tracy as they go through a child custody hearing and, and the whole draining process uh, in the new year. Anybody else? Yes, Amber. Um, Ezra, Shaden's little boy, has surgery on Tuesday. He broke his leg a couple years ago and they had to put a plate and stuff in it and they're going back in to remove that. Um, and those of you who know Ezra, it's never simple with him, you know, so just pray. For God's hand to be upon him, that there won't be any complications, and he needs a break. You know, okay. he's an amazing little boy, so just pray for the safety upon him and strength for Tim and Shane. And Leroy has surgery tomorrow. Uh, they're going to remove part of his lung, and uh, we're going to pray that that goes well, and they'll get all the cancer, and uh, we'll be praising the Lord about it. So be praying for Leroy tomorrow. Yes. 
My grandson was down the field in Boston. He was the oldest one playing football. He did something with a day and night. I think maybe four of them see him. He never had to do an MRI or anything. He did repair it. It's a great one. Yes. I have a three uh, for my sister's husband. Uh, he has been doing so well. Samantha Dinger, who's uh, 
going to have sore shoulder surgery this week. And, and Lord, for Sarah and all the college students that are uh, preparing and taking finals, Lord, we ask that you would uh, just help them to remember and, and to do well and to, to travel home safely. And, and Lord, we just pray for the family of, of Adelon Dell. Lord, we're asking uh, for, for your peace and, and comfort at this time. And Lord, we think of the rest of our time here today and our service. Lord, we are just uh, in need of an experience and a, uh, of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that that would happen today. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you'd like to be anointed, would you please come forward at this time? And uh, we can have some others come and, and forward to lay hands on and pray for, for those who need a touch.
Lord, we know that what the family thinks of him. And Lord, we just ask that you would give the family strength once again as they go through all this. Father God, we pray all of these things in the name of the one whom we sing about, Jesus. Because there is no other name in which we can find healing, in which we can find truth, in which we can find peace. And so we call on that name today. And Lord, just ask you to move and work in your way. It's in Jesus' name we ask all these things. And all God's people agreed and said, Amen. children are dismissed for Children's Church. Last week, if you remember correctly, we, we started our sermon by saying that we were going to take a look at the next three accounts that happened in the ninth chapter of Acts. By looking at them through the lens of another scripture. And that scripture is in, in, found in John 14. And it's the words of Jesus when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And last week we talked about Saul's conversion. And how up to that point in his life he thought he had this thing all figured out. You know, when I was, when I was in my 20s, early 20s, I thought I had things all figured out. And now I, the older I get, the more I find that I didn't know. I, either that or I'm getting dumb. I don't know which one it is. But, uh, but uh, Saul thought he had things all figured out. And he was persecuting the Christians. And he was on his way to Damascus when he met the way. Jesus. And, and, and so and this week we're going to, to continue to look at and Saul as the main character in the narrative. But instead we're going to, to be looking at how he found Jesus to be the truth. Now, many of you probably know someone like this, but, but there are many views on what, what is true and what is not true, and there are many who claim that there is no absolute truth, and so they just make things up as they go, and, 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 and they live life like it's just a series of gray areas, and, 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 and others claim to know the truth, and yet, their actions don't match up with their words. Does anyone know anybody like that? And so they claim, I know the truth, and then they do the exact opposite. Everyone wants to tell us what they think is true to them. But truth is not found in people's opinions. Truth is not found uh, on the television. Truth is not found by who says what. Truth is found, according to Scripture, in the person of Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. Did you ever notice that how some of the most famous movies that, that come out over the years always have something to tell us about what truth is? And this morning I just want to give you a little example of that from, from some movies. My intention to call you one of these ships, pick up a crew and talk to the great village brother and otherwise go for my weekly black ass I said no lies. I think he's telling the truth. If he were telling the truth, he wouldn't have told us. Unless, of course, he knew you wouldn't believe the truth, even if you told him. Now, let me get this straight. That would mean that you lied about your age to make yourself older. But why would any woman want to do that? I changed it so I could get married. And the truth shall set you free! Tonight for once, I want the truth. Did you kill my father? Now we get to it. You said that your brother died in his sleep. That was more or less true. I was telling you. 
how Paul has all this free time to roam around and, and persecute Christians? How does this happen? How, how is he able to do this? After all, as we talked last week, Paul was a very educated man. Paul was, was studied under one of the most prestigious teachers of the day in the person of Gamaliel. And now, you would not have studied under a rabbi like Gamaliel unless you had intentions of, of becoming a rabbi or a teacher yourself. That was why you studied. And, and, and the, the position of rabbi or teacher was one of the most sought after positions in all of the Jewish culture. And so he had studied under Gamaliel. But there's no sign of Saul mentioned as being a Jewish teacher or preacher up until that point. Also, he was a very religious man. He had, he had received all the training, but he was always in church whenever it was open. And, 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 he, and Saul was very devout to the Jewish faith. And, and in the church, the, the position of rabbi would be lifted up above all others. But there's something about Saul that's not adding up. Despite all of his training, despite all of his religion and his religious devotion, we know later that he relied on tent making as his source of income. Not teaching. Not preaching. Even though he had all of the training. Perhaps it was his personality that, 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 that kept him from, from teaching or, or maybe it was his small stature that, that got in the way and messed with his mind or, or maybe his speaking skills up until this point did not lend themselves to him being a rabbi or teacher, even though he was qualified down to the letter on paper to be a rabbi. Instead, we find Saul in the background. Remember, Saul didn't stone see Stephen. Saul held the coats of those who stoned Stephen. So even in, in, in when he was going out, he was staying in the shadows, in the background. He didn't preach messages against what these Christians were doing. Instead, he went and rounded them up so that they could be punished by the, the leaders of the church. If you've ever had a child or yourself that went to school for one thing and then ended up doing something else, that's, that's the way Saul was. He was trained and, and, and taught to be a rabbi, and here he was making tents. And, and here he was persecuting Christians. Maybe it's the fact that Saul wasn't as devoted to the cause of Judaism and the law as he appeared outwardly to be. But after meeting Jesus, after finding the truth, Saul stepped into this calling of teacher immediately. Listen to the words of our scripture. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. And once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, when he was a Jew, Saul would not teach even though he would, had, taught, had learned under the greatest rabbi. But now that he's a Christian, he has no fear. He goes right into the, the Jewish synagogue and starts teaching. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the one man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. So at once he started preaching. Before he knew the truth, before he met Jesus, he didn't teach. But now he is a teacher very quickly. Immediately after he found out the truth, you can't shut him up about it. And it's because of this that we have the majority of the New Testament today. Saul found out the truth, had an encounter with the truth, and now he was going to shout it from the rooftops and begin to teach about Jesus Christ. Something that, that he was very reluctant to do in the past or, or something that he wouldn't do in the past despite all of his training. Now was something that came natural to Saul. It says in our scripture that his speaking became more and more powerful and his speaking baffled the people who heard him and knew him before. But this speaking thing goes even deeper. Saul was not just preaching and teaching in the synagogue. It says that Paul was debating. It's one thing to stand up in front of people and tell them about Jesus Christ. 
It's a completely new level when you allow those people to respond with to you and, and they, they give their own feedback and what they're thinking. So Saul was not just preaching and teaching, but he was debating the Grecian Jews. Someone who would not even get up and talk. Someone who liked to stay in the shadows before was now someone who was actively debate, debating the leaders of the Grecian Jews. His only defense... He was going to rely on what he knew was true. He had found that truth in the person of Jesus Christ. A few verses later gives us the account. It said, Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Grecian Jews, but they tried to kill him. Saul speaks powerfully and boldly because he knew now what the truth was. We have that same truth today. In John 1, Jesus calls himself the Word. And, and it says that the Word was with God. And, and, and Jesus is the Word of God in human form, who has also said about himself that he is the truth. And so we can deduce that every word that is written in here is truth. Every word in here was, was, is, is, is a part of Jesus. And Jesus is truth. When we speak from the scriptures, there is power and boldness. And when we speak from the scriptures, we know that it is true. Too many times we get ourselves into trouble because we don't rely on the words of scripture enough. And we, we think that we have to, to convince them with our own words or our own thinking when we tell others about Christ. But if we know the truth, that truth will set us free in our speaking if we will share the words of God with those who will hear. So Saul found the truth and that truth opened up the speaking and preaching and teaching to him. Also we find that, that, that the truth set him free and made him fearless. This is what the scripture said. After many days had gone by, the Jews conspired to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him, not believing he was really a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. Saul was a man of fear before he met the truth. How do we know this? Well, for one thing, Saul found it necessary to silence the message of Christians. He was afraid of the message that they were spreading. You know, if you're not afraid of the message that they're spreading, you just, you just talk with them or you try and convince them out of the argument. But when you fear their message, you try and shut them up as quickly as possible. You try and silence them. But he didn't try to turn them away from their, their message. He just tried to kill them because he had no arguments against it. He was afraid of what they were saying. And so he had to shut them up. By the way, Anyone who tries to silence their detractors or tries to shut up different viewpoints is someone who is living in fear and doesn't know the truth. So when someone tells you, oh, that's just stupid, oh, the argument is over, the debate is over, they don't know the truth. Because if you have the truth, you're not afraid of what the other person says. If you have the truth, you are able to stand on your own argument. And that's where Saul is now. After he found the truth, he no longer found the need to shut up people. He no longer found the need to go back and, and, and kill those who were, who were saying a message different from his. Instead, he debated with them. He spoke powerfully because where the truth is, there is power. And he, because of this, he was able to do it without fear, despite everyone wanting to kill him. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That's a couple of days. Saul's going around rounding up Christians so that it, they could be killed and, 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 and tortured. And now a few days later, he's the one being hunted down and, and being sought to be killed. Now talk about your turn of events. The Jews wanted him dead. The Grecian Jews wanted him killed. 
His life was in danger, and yet he continued to speak the truth and had no fear. You see, the truth always wins out in the argument, and it erases our fears. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them, tell them this. Tell them, if you have Jesus, you have the truth. Turn to your neighbor and let, let them know that. that. That's something that we need to grab hold of. We need to capture it deep down inside because once we get that, once we have the confidence that, that if we have Jesus, that we have the truth, what can anyone say to you to dissuade you from sharing your faith? All fear is cast out. All fear is gone. The truth sets us free from all fear. And that truth is found in Jesus Christ. When you truly have Jesus, you can share and talk about Him wherever you go and you won't fear a thing. You can share Him in school, even though you're not supposed to talk about Jesus there. You can share Him at work, even though you, you fear what your co-workers may, may say to you, or, or they'll be, you'll think that they'll be hostile to the message. When you have the truth, and you have Jesus, there are no arguments, there are no threats that can stand up against you, because you have it, you have won, you have the winning argument, you have the truth deep down inside. The truth will make you fearless. And lastly, the truth will be good for the church. Saul stands up. He boldly speaks and teaches the truth. And wherever he goes, he does so without fear. But look at the words of our scripture again. It says, when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. So one person finds the truth. One person finds the truth and can't shut up about it despite wanting to be killed. And as a result, the whole church benefits. One person. This is what the church experiences. It says that the church experienced peace. You know, Saul must have felt like he was in the middle of a war zone. And we know at the beginning of Acts that the, that the whole church was scattered because of the persecution that was going on. Yet despite all of that, despite all of these things coming against them, they were at peace. And in that same John 14, we find that Jesus is one who brings peace and he describes it as a peace that passes all understanding. It's, it's as if you're having a peace that doesn't make sense. Anyone ever know that peace? Even though you're in the midst of, of all these things, you can have peace. When the truth is spoken, the church is at peace. And I can't think of a more precious gift to have this Christmas than the gift of peace. Anybody like a few more peaceful days? Amen. Also, the church was strengthened. In the midst of, of, of a time that the church found itself in the midst of all these struggles, it was growing stronger. Saul was acting as a sharpening agent to his other brothers and sisters. And, and, and he was making the, the church stronger through, through his teaching and his example. And I can imagine... The church sharing testimonies about what Saul was doing and what Saul was, was experiencing and that brought the whole body up by this one man's effort. Also, the church was encouraged. Saul's effort lifted the morale of the people. They saw the work of the Holy Spirit in his life and they benefited from the same Holy Spirit working in their midst and lifting each of them up, bringing encouragement. And also, the church grew in numbers. Let me tell you, everyone is always looking for the next, a new way to grow the church. That There's always, every year, there's at least two or three new books on the subject, and they go to the top of the charts. But here's something that will always work. Have someone find the truth. Have that same person share the truth and live the church, and, the, and live the truth, and the church will grow. When they see people who were not a follower come to know the truth, and live the truth, people want to come and see that. And when the church is on fire and living in truth, 
people will come to watch it burn. They wanted to know what's going on there. And if you want the church to grow, you must live in and share the truth regularly. I want you to think about this for a moment. All of the, these stuff, the peace, the strengthening, the encouragement, the growth, all of this came as a result of one person living out the truth that they had found. What would happen here at Leatherwood if we had five people get serious about pursuing the truth, get serious about living it out and sharing it with everyone they came into contact with? Just five of us. What would be the result of the church here? We know what happened in the case of Saul, and we've already established that every word in here is true. I'd expect similar results if we would follow his example and live out the truth as he did. My message to you this morning is, you can handle the truth. We were designed to, to know the person of Jesus Christ and to have a relationship with Him, and He is the truth. And I'm going to tell you, you don't need a priest or a pastor or an elder to explain the truth to you. It's there in His Word for each one of us to find. Simply, it's this. You need to know the truth and show the truth. That's our, that's our, that's our uh, mission here on this world, here on this earth. That truth is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and He is found all through here. All we have to do is pick it up and look, and we can find the truth. And in this day and age, you are going to have a million people screaming one way, screaming this way, follow me, I've got the truth. This is what is true. There is no truth, some will even say. There is a truth. His name is Jesus Christ. Saul met him, and his life was changed forever. <clears throat> Once Saul was a man who was, who was terrified and afraid to speak in public, now he's preaching everywhere he went. Once Saul was a man who lived in his own fears, now he doesn't care who wants to kill him, he's still going to go on and, and carry this message. And once Saul was one who wanted to kill the church, and now he's responsible for bringing peace and strengthening the church. So do you know the truth? And are you daily living for him and for the truth to be known? Would you pray with me? Christ, we do declare that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. This morning we have looked at Saul's journeys as he became a Christian and a new believer, and Lord, the things that he did after he met you and found the truth seem incredible to us, but Lord, may we all realize that these same promises can be for us. Lord, I pray that each one of us would know Jesus Christ and know Him as, in a way that He would be our truth. No longer would we rely on what we think is true. No longer would we rely on what we feel is true. No longer would we rely on what someone else says to be true but that we would know Jesus Christ, the truth. Lord, help us to find that truth. And Lord, may once we find it, may we go and show that truth to all who need it. Lord, I pray that you would catch people on fire with a fresh vision of you as truth. And, and Lord, I pray that they would burn for the, brightly for those to see. And Lord, I pray that, that, that the church would, would grow in response to the truth being boldly proclaimed and boldly lived out. Lord, we're not just asking that. We're, we're leaning on your word as the promise. And we declare it to be true. Father, we love you. We 
thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the truth. And my prayer today is that the truth will begin to set people free. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go and stand and worship. Have a good day.